Wow, look, looks like I was muted there for a minute. So welcome. If this is your first time joining tonight, my name is Paige. I'm the chief pixel pusher and paint brusher over at Gumption. And this is where I get to sit down with you and teach you some things that I know about watercolor. And really, it's just kind of a fun environment to uh, get your feet wet with painting. So uh, if you're here joining me for the first time, welcome. And if you are here, let me know that you are here in the comments. Looks like Laurel is here. So welcome, Laurel. Thanks for tuning in tonight. If this is your first time tuning in, uh, just so you know, if you want to check the uh, description down below or the chat, there is a link to a reference image that you may want to access. You can download it. It's easy to get. And you can also trace this image as well. And usually at the beginning of these, I give you a little bit of time to trace that image. So if you want to snag that in the description, go ahead and do that now. So like I said, tonight we're going to be painting a cat with an unconventional color. So this really means like something that a cat would not normally be. Um, I actually painted our, our test cat here with purple. And tonight I'm going to actually be using turquoise and we're just going to have fun with it. A lot of times when I do portraits, I include colors that don't always, you don't always think of because uh, I enjoy it and adds a little interest to the piece and it can be very, very subtle. And so I thought tonight would be a good time to, to do that. All right. So if you have any questions, um, you can go ahead and throw those in chat. This class usually lasts for about an hour. And um, again, if you want to grab the imagery for this class, go ahead and get it over in the description. You can just grab it there. Uh, tonight, I, this is what I'll be using tonight, um, a mixture of, uh, you do not have to have these same colors that I have, but a lot of times students really like to know what I'm using. So tonight I'll be using Naples yellow. Don't panic if you don't have Naples yellow, you can use a Hansa yellow or a lemon yellow or any kind of yellow that you have and you can really dilute it. Um, we'll be using green so whether you mix your own green from yellow and blue or you have a convenience color green you can use that too. I'll be using a quinacridone coral, uh, maybe a little bit of opera so if you have a pink or a red or something in that uh, range use that. And like you will see in the example we used, I used purple you're welcome to use purple as your unconventional color, um, or you can follow suit and use turquoise like I'm going to use in the next cat. So one thing that you'll want to make sure that you have close at hand are some paper towels. And you'll also want to make sure that you have maybe a hair dryer nearby if you need to dry your picture a little bit. So again, throw your questions in chat, say hello in chat and we will get started. Let's see. Okay, so I'm going to switch my camera view here and this way you can see what what's going on over here. And you can see here's our unconventional kitty. <laughs> so the image that you're going to want to access, I'll bring it here so you can see it. This is what that image looks like. So you'll have the reference image and the trace image. And I'm just going to use my little drawing here to duplicate this. If you want to freehand it, well, you can certainly do that too. So you can see in this image, I used purple and it worked out really well. Of course, it's kind of close to gray, but you know, that will work. And I'll use um, turquoise today just to show you how we can make this work with a, an unconventional color. So oftentimes, I think really the most, the biggest thing that we have to worry about is value. So if you can stay close in value, and values the uh, gray, it's black and white, the varying degrees of black and white our darks and our lights, if we can stay within our values, 
and make sure that our darks are dark enough and our lights are light enough with a color. I think a lot of times you can substitute a color with an unconventional color. First and foremost though, you need to be having fun. So get ready to enjoy tonight's class. And yeah, let's just have some fun. He, this guy looks really wacky in this sketch. I don't know what you think, but he, I think he really looks really wacky. Sometimes the sketching process seems like it takes more time than the painting process to me. So I have to say I've had the best day today. I don't know what's going on, but the universe is rocking and rolling today. I finished up a big project that I've been working on for about seven days and one of my friends came by who has a shop nearby and she brought us ice cream while we were outside and got to have lunch with Kyle today and i got a, a skateboard today i did some client work for someone i know in town and we did a little trade action so that was cool excited to get a new skateboard rolling get a little incentive to enjoy some of this great weather we're having so hopefully your day is rocking and rolling too. Let's see. Just put a couple of these in here. Okay, so that's probably good. How are you doing time-wise, guys? I know that some of you are still probably drawing. So let's put this here. Maybe clean up this a little bit. Wow. It's a little behind today. It's been on the run this week. And it's gone by so fast. But Thursday nights are kind of like my Friday, so I am really excited. Right on, it was an amazing day. There was a lot more that happened that was just awesome, but thank you. I hope your day rocked too. And you're ready to go, Laurel, so all right. So first I'm gonna start with this Naples yellow to put in this really light yellow color and kind of get that base down. If you don't have Naples yellow, that's not a problem. I'm going to show you here. This is what Naples yellow looks like on my palette. So if you have something that's similar, that's great. If you have, um, let's see, this is a buff titanium. You might be able to use that and mix a little yellow in it and it'll really give you the feel of a Naples yellow. If you don't, also you can use Hansa or a raw umber, actually, wouldn't be bad either. So I'm getting smarter with my old age. I'm gonna use a bigger brush here. So you can see I have this nice oval three quarter inch brush. I'm just gonna be mixing some water and making my life just a little bit easier here. see that a little bit better. Okay, let's scooch this over. So I am going to try to let's see. 
and you can wet this and do wet and wet if you want to. I'm going to just kind of go for it here and hope that I don't get it in places I don't want it. But I'm going to kind of start up here. We're going to avoid this side a little bit. We don't need to get in there. And I'm going to avoid the nose area in this area. Kind of get around the side of the face here, underneath the eye, and kind of around this lower part here and down here. Can you see that? I'll zoom in here a little bit. Maybe that'll help. Might need a little more pigment. Mix up a little bit more. And I'm going to get kind of, I've got quite a bit of pigment here. I don't know that I care so much. It's kind of nice because this will make this lower area kind of fade out somewhat. So I'm just going to kind of tap it in here. We're going to put that darker color in there. So you're wanna, going to want to get your base yellowy light color in there. You can do these little wispies in the ear if you want. And I feel like that's good for this first layer. So I'm actually going to dry mine. I'm going to step off camera here really quickly and dry this. And you can kind of get your first layer down and we will get started here. So I'm going to mute myself real quick. All right. All right. So I'm not sure how to pronounce this, but I'll say hi in woman. So hello to you. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, if you want to paint along with us tonight, you can go ahead and grab that sketch uh, in our description and get to painting with us. Thank you. It's a really pretty cute kitty and you can grab that reference photo too so you can kind of see what this little beauty looks like right okay so let's get rocking and rolling here so we've put down this base color and we can continue to layer this so um, we can add more darker areas here but for now I think what I'm going to do next is we're going to mix our other color our unconventional color and we will you can use any color that you choose I am actually going to pick a turquoise color this is a turquoise a phthalo turquoise actually I'm going to bring this over see if I can do this without mixing these no guarantee 
no guarantee. So really it's helpful to use a bigger brush like I'm using here because you can really cover more ground and it doesn't dry on you just so quickly. And that's kind of what I'm always fighting is that drying so quickly. So let's see, I'm gonna scooch this over. Okay. So I'm, I'm gonna actually approach this with a wet and wet technique. I've dipped my brush in water and I'm just wetting the areas where I want this turquoise color to come in. As you can see, I still have pigment on my brush. So I'm gonna let this one sit here for a minute and then I'm gonna go into this side And just paint everywhere that there's this dark. And if you have the reference image, you can see it's a dark gray. And I'm just laying it all around the eye, not making sure not to get into the eye. And we've got some color over here, so I don't want to forget that we have some gray over here. We'll put our turquoise there, or whichever color you choose to use tonight. And then I'm going to dip into my color here and start dropping in this color. So in some of the darker areas, I'm going to make sure that I hit around the eye and up here. And around the side of the face. Cute little face. Kind of tapping around the eye here. You can even dip into your pigment directly if you want. Look at that. <laughs> That's kind of wild. So what I love about these core, core paints, they don't disappoint, give you kind of fireworks. And anywhere that you want to pull out color, so let's make sure that I've got everything colored here. I may have to go in, this is pretty wet, so I may have to go in with a, a brush, kind of smooth some stuff out. So around this eye, I've gotten kind of bumpy. You can take a, a dry brush and pull out some of the pigment if you want to in areas where you want them to be lighter. So maybe the top of the ear here, I can pull out some pigment. Let's see. Maybe just here. It looks like it's drying already there. Clean up some edges. And this is really wet here, so maybe I can pull some of this out too. You can always tap it with your paper towel if you feel like you've gotten carried away with the water. I can just help you get rid of excess there. So now I'm going to pull a little bit out here too. just to kind of help create that line there. And this is really soft here for this cat. Now I'm gonna drag, gra grab my hair dryer 
I'm going to leave the other parts of this because I think I will use them. So I'm going to mute myself really quick. Okay, so you could kind of see that I was working that brush while I was also uh, <laughs> just trying to uh, get some of this light out here and dry it all at the same time. So don't worry too much about how your area looks right now because this is really a work in progress and we will keep adding to it. So I think next we'll put some eyes in here because it looks very weird without the eyes. And so I'm going to go ahead and put some green in here. Now I have some ready-made green that I like to use. Now if you don't have green, you can easily mix green with a Hansa yellow. Let's see, I'll scoot this up here. With Hansa yellow and an ultramarine blue. So if you if you want to mix green, that's how you can mix it if you don't have a convenience color. I'm going to be using a yellow, green, gold, and that's really just more yellow, and this one has a little more blue in it. So we'll get started here. And if you have questions about colors, go ahead and throw them in chat there. I am a big fan of sap green, so I'm going to be using some sap green, and I'm going to be talking about... Uh, how I approach eyes in uh, any kind of animal that I actually do. I have a very specific kind of workaround that I do that I really enjoy. So I'm going to get a small palette here. And I don't need a ton of pigment to start. So I'm just going to put a little water in here and then I'm going to grab some of this green gold color. It looks kind of icky here on the screen, but you can see it's kind of yellow. So when you're mixing your green with yellow and blue, you're just going to have a little more yellow than you do blue. Okay, so as far as the eye goes, I'm going to cover... Here we have the iris here. Looks like I got into my turquoise a little bit. 
I'm not going to move into the corner of the eye. We're just going to work here in the iris. We're going to cover the pupil too. And we'll just lay down both of these. So this is what I call a local color or one color. Local color is your base coat. And then you can add your lights and darks into it. And it looks like my one eye is already practically dry. So I'm going to let that kind of dry there. Give it just a second. So I suppose if you're waiting for these to dry, you can actually work on your nose at the same time. Their cute little nose. And this is a quinacridone coral color. I really love it. It's just a great rosy color. This is actually a Daniel Smith color. And so I will kind of paint in the nose here while we're waiting. And again, I'm just going to hit it all with this one color. Okay, and we'll let that dry as well. So I'll give you a minute here. I don't want to move too fast for you. Sometimes you'll see me tapping my watercolor to make sure that it is, in fact, dry. So when I'm going to pull up this reference image really quick before my battery dies here. And you can see there's a lot of color and variation here in the eye. There is shading that happens underneath the eyelid here where it's darker and less light is let in. You also see you have some highlights here and some color variation, some lighter colors here. And that's, it's always good to sit and observe your, whatever your reference is, to really look at those values. And half the time, you know, if you squint, that is really important to help you see value. So I'm going to get a little of my sap green here. So if you're making your own green, you're just going to add more ultra blue to your green and you're going to have more of this mossy kind of sap green color. Okay, so I think I've got enough water here. So what I like to do is I really want to give this eye some dimension. So of course we have the shadow that's underneath and we might have to go back in for that shadow, but also we have kind of some dark, darker areas kind of around the eye. And this is a good opportunity to kind of clean up your edges sometimes, soften that edge a little. And hit this guy too. Don't worry, we will put a pupil in there. And you may want to even add another layer of your yellow green 
my my stuff is drying pretty fast here I'm actually going to let that dry just a little bit here so we can make give it just a minute so we can do a little bit better shadow. Yeah, eyes do seem um, really hard sometimes and don't be intimidated by them. Just check them out and look and see what they're really constructed of value-wise and color-wise. I mean, they don't even have to be the same color, but see where you might have shading around. Obviously, there are some dark areas that are around this iris. We have a pupil, and that's going to help it kind of come to life as well. I just really like to have a good, strong kind of shadow underneath the uh, eyelid. And you'll also note, especially if you have the um, image here, our, the whites of our eyes aren't always super white. You can see this is part of the white of the eye, but there's some pink in here and gray and some blue. There's some dark dark kind of gray color here too. So to make your eyes look more realistic, that's one thing that will help you make them feel more realistic. Okay, so I'm gonna add a little bit more here to the eye, and then we can kind of do some more details here. So I'm probably gonna leave this for now. I'm gonna curve this just a little bit here. And leave that. About ready to lose my battery here on my iPad. So we'll go back to our Naples yellow now. We will define our eyes a little bit more, but we're gonna let those dry for now. How are you guys doing, Laurel? Are you guys still with me? <laughs> I'm moving too fast for you. Just tell me to slow down. So now I'm gonna get a round brush. Let's see. I'm gonna get a brown brush. This is probably, I don't know, maybe a, a six or an eight there. And I'm just gonna dip into my already mixed yellow color. And we can kind of start adding in some of these darker areas around the nose and the eye here. Kind of moves up here. We've got a little bit of Gonna have to open this up again. Let's see. We've got a bit of color up here. So it's not totally unconventional color. This side of the face is still pretty conventional color. And this is kind of where negative painting also comes into play because you are, this area here is lighter in our reference image. So in order to make that feel lighter, we can take this darker color and paint around that light area. And this actually goes all the way up in here. We also have this chinny chin chin area that we can shape And, you know, right now this looks kind of weird, but
but there's that 80% of the rule that 80% of the time your, your piece looks weird and terrible. And then you get to that point where you can kind of finish it out strong. We also want to get this area too, because there is a shadow here. You can actually do it on both sides, but be careful not to get into your unconventional color. Then we have these little whisker dots around here. And the side of the nose. It's a really cute kitty. Cute kitty. Okay. Laurel, you guys are with me, so that's good. Okay. So we can kind of let that dry. Um, Another technique that I used over here on the nose, which I'll show with show you, um, a lot of times when we're dealing with an area that is white, I like to use a really light blue. And this is not light enough, but this is an ultramarine blue that I really water down. And I'm gonna switch out brushes so I can have this small brush can see just how tiny that is. Looks like it's got a little pigment in it. I need to clean that out just a little bit. And so on this nose, if you have the reference image, it's a really kind of a bright white nose. We have some shading here along the nose. just to give this kind of shape. Just real subtle, and this is kind of turned gray on me, but. Really helps to give this guy. So, and also, you know, like, I guess I don't have any that are super close, but any kind of light blue color that you have, even down here, you could tap in a little bit of blue. Okay. How are you doing? Okay, so let's grab our pink again. So we want to give this nose just a little bit of dimension. So at the base, it's a little darker, so we can just add another little bit here at the base. Just zoom in a little. And kind of, I want to be careful I don't get into this gray color. Since we're working in some different areas, we'll kind of let these areas dry. We'll go back to the eyes. And now we're going to dip into a dark color. For the demo, I actually used black. If you have a Payne's Gray, use a Payne's Gray. It's all going to be dark, whatever, that, whatever you have. So I'm just going to use this. It's called Peach Black. If you don't have it, don't worry. You can still make amazing art without having the same colors that I do. All right. So you can see I have a really teeny tiny brush here. And we can kind of look at this other brush. So for the eye, I think I used this brush and it doesn't have the size on it anymore. This might be, gosh, I don't know, maybe a two. It's a very 
thin brush. And then this one is a 20 over zero. Can you see that? Maybe you can't. Here, here we go. There you go. It's like the tiniest of tiny. And I don't, I guess maybe I don't know enough about brushes to know why, how they determine what their size, sizes are, but sometimes it's a zero brush. Sometimes it's a one. I have a lot of these Trickel brushes and honestly, I think everyone who paints small should have some little brushes like this just because it's so they're just handy for detail and I'm a detail person. So for me, it's kind of essential. But if you don't have a tiny brush like that, like you say you have a brush like this, these are really great brushes because they have that very pointy tip and you can get a really thin line. I don't know if you can't see that. Let's see if I can get it on camera here. Thin line, yeah, here we go. More pigment. So you can see this very thin line here. Hopefully you can see that. You can do that with a brush like this too, with this pointy tip. So this actually came from Dick Blick. This is a Dick Blick brush. It's not a Trickel brush, but it is a, it's by Silver and it's a black velvet. Kind of hard to see there. No, I don't get paid by these companies, by the way, either. I just kind of have experiment with what I like. And I'm a big fan of Trickel brushes, but I had to give those velvets a try. So I'm going to mix up a little bit more black here. By now things should be drying a little. And you'll see a wide variety of palettes that I use too. And it's really up to your personal preference, kind of what you, you like. Not any one of them is super duper magical. They all kind of, it just depends on what you like. I like the porcelain palettes for sure. And you can get some of those that hold paint as well. And they're really nice. So, so I'm just going to, this is like eyeliner for this cap. Just kind of going to go along this ridge here really gently. And we're going to go around the iris here. I probably need more pigment here. Kind of up here. We're going to add some gray, I think, to this area here. But you can already see how it's sort of coming together. A little bit. Once we pop that pupil in there, it's really going to look fantastic. So if I want to add a little bit, because there's quite a bit of gray in this area, you can just add a little bit of water here. Kind of tap off your brush. You don't want to have a big pool there. And kind of feather it in here. You may have to go back in with your black. And this part of the eye is pretty much all black from the image. So kind of fill this in here. Then we can add in our pupil for this side. Hopefully I put mine in the right spot. Okay. Now this kitty's gonna start coming to life. 
So we're going to just repeat this on the other side. What's different about this other side is it's lighter over here. So we're going to want to kind of preserve some of the white in this area. But we'll start with kind of rimming our pupil. And I just want to say thanks for hanging out with me on your Thursday night. What do they call this Friday Eve? So thanks for hanging out, doing a little painting, doing a little something for yourself. You know, if your black's not black enough, you could just put a little more pigment in there. This is a nice little curve. And I may want to get a little darker. Well, this little cutie. Okay, so now I'm going to tap in this pupil maybe don't drink a lot of coffee before you do this one <laughs> but see with this little teeny tiny brush i can get a lot more a little more control there and if you feel like your other pupil needs to be darker you can do that too And while I have this tiny brush and I have uh, black, I'm going to kind of rim the inside of this nose. Because it has um, some shadow in here. So you can start dark. You could actually even put this little line that's here if you want. And then you can kind of dip it in some water gray it out a little bit and just put that next to that dark there you can even do this little line to the mouth what's great is you can also create kind of texture with little lines it's kind of like being able to draw okay well i think our 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 cat is starting to look like something here. And because uh, we have some of this pink kind of around this eye here, for this guy, I'm just going to rim it a little bit in pink and maybe add a little bit of that blue in here. So it's not the stark white because it is kind of in shadow. So the eyes really come alive when we add our highlights here. Now we could keep adding um, color to the eyes and you can create, continue to create some depth or you can pull out color. So what do I mean by that? You can dip your brush in water and tap it on your paper towel and you can scrub a little and it will create a lighter area. Which then you can kind of tap with your paper towel it might have taken off more than I want there, but we'll, we'll mimic it over here. So you can really play with the eyes and create real de depth. And, you know, of course, that the eyes are always the favorite part to do. I'm going to fix this area just a little bit here. But you can keep playing with them at your will but that's kind of how I approach eyes we will approach the highlight at the very end so now let's see what do we have left to do 
but we can add a little bit of more detail. We can add some more uh, this dark area here. We've gotten pretty good and far, I would say. So I'm just going to find my other round brush or a round brush. And I'm going to dip into my turquoise color here and get this little spot here. You can kind of start intense, maybe add a little water and gradate it out. You can kind of see sometimes I will wipe my brush. I just wipe off the excess into my fingers there to soften stuff. You can even add more pigment if you feel like you need a little boost here. You can do that. You can define this area a little bit more if you want. And add in kind of other details. Maybe you want to add in this ear portion here. I always like to soften edges, but that's kind of a personal preference. we have I just am loving some of this granulation here so I'm going to choose to to keep that I might kind of darken this area what's interesting about this cat is we kind of have this overhang here at the corner and we'll also use it over here on the other side with the Naples yellow, which I've made green here. Sometimes you just have to go for it. Just adding these little details that kind of start making this really come together, make this cat really look like something. I think another thing is we can do the shadow. There's kind of this area underneath here that is a shadow and you're gonna hear my cat Lucy scratching on my door she wants in so I'm kind of mixing up uh, just a gray color here from my black you could use any color that you want to use it's just got to be a little bit darker value you see to create the shadow under here to give this a little definition You guys have cats they just really are insistent they hate closed doors you can also kind of use your brush to create some texture too by just we, we kind of talked about this here recently but you start thin and then you can flatten your brush out on your paper and bring it out and that's a great way to make leaves don't forget to use your brush to its full capability because honestly they can do amazing things just on their own so i'm going to just add a little bit here with these wispies and my paint's a little green now but that's okay Well, I'm really happy to be showing this, and thanks for tuning in. I hope that you're learning something you didn't know before or, or having fun, one or both. Painting can feel really daunting, and of course, um, it, 
watercolor is sort of, it can be kind of hard. And it was definitely hard for me when I first started painting with watercolor. You'll kind of, you kind of find your own way, I feel, a lot of times. So we're at the 56 minute mark. So maybe it is a good time for me to introduce the gouache to this process and uh, answer any questions that you might have as we are moving along here. So gouache is, it's an opaque paint. And this is, I have designer gouache here in titanium white that I have in my palette here. You can use a gel pen. You can use a colored pencil that's white. Um, it doesn't have to be gouache. I kind of like gouache because it it really it can be reconstituted. So I feel like it's less wasteful. I can never get gel pens to work anyway. So so this brush that I'm holding right here, this is a four brush. And I'm just going to dot this white across this dark area here. And you can see how just adding that highlight truly brings these eyes to life. And I might put another dot up here. I'm going to tell you about a little trick that I like to use uh, in my artwork here in a minute. But I'm going to let those dry because sometimes my gouache is not white enough. I'll have to do another application of it. And so know that that could be a hazard of using um, this kind of white. So I'm going to get a smaller brush because we're going to try to put in some of these whiskers. And of course, they're really going to show up in the dark parts. So this kitty has some whiskers that are like little eyebrow whiskers. And you can just kind of add them on. Now it's probably hard to see. Zoom in. And this is one of those areas where you may have to do a couple applications. Well, that's kind of fun. It sort of brings this little guy to life. You could even try it over on this side, but you can see it's much harder to see. But, you know, gouache paint, uh, it really is. A, it's a water soluble paint that's really pretty much like watercolors, except for it has chalk in it. And a lot of professional illustrators over the years, this is what they have done their comps in. And for a long time before digital what they would use to create illustrations. I am not an expert in gouache. I've used it a little bit and I'm interested in using it more just to kind of try to test it out. I prefer water soluble paints to oil paints. Oil paints are awesome, but I just like the water, water stuff better. But there are all kinds. There is also a gouache that's an acrylic gouache, which is acrylic gouache. That is kind of fun too. So if you haven't found your medium of choice and you feel like watercolor is hard, there are other types out there too. You can even, let's see, I'm going to zoom out a little bit here. And I'm going to, I've lost my reference image. My iPad died, but you could even do it for these little wispies in the ear if you want to. Now, if you don't have gouache, that's fine. Um, you know, I 
it's hard to find this kind of paint here in Pocatello sometimes. So I order all of my, the paints that I can't get anywhere else from Dick Blick or a comparable um, paint store online, which, you know, if we had somebody here locally, I'd definitely support them, but we don't. You, sometimes also it's kind of cool to add a little bit of a water, kind of the water line down below the eye where we have a little bit of that fluid that you can kind of see in the light hits off of. So sometimes you'll have it in a corner of an eye or at the base of the eye. So those eyes look pretty realistic for the most part. And sometimes what I really like to do, and this is just a personal preference thing, there's no rhyme or reason to it other than that I like it. So I'm a big fan of this cobalt color. This is very close to this teal color that I have used. And sometimes I like to use that kind of in the other white of the eye. Sometimes uh, diluted a little, so we'll by no means do you have to do that, but I just kind of enjoy it. So you can mix, mix it a little bit with your gouache. Kind of fun. Okay. So what questions do you have for me? You can keep working on this if you want to. If you want to create some shapes like this, you can always... Go back in with your color and round brush and kind of paint these in. Even, you know, with a little water, you can continue to soften those and just add them in. So now throw me your questions or concerns or what you enjoyed here tonight, and maybe even what you'd like to see in the future. You know, uh, I'd like to know what you'd like to see on this channel, since you're the ones tuning in. I do my best, but you might not like cats, painting cats, so. <laughs> you have to let me know. All right, let's see, Laurel. Hey, thanks, Laurel. Appreciate you tuning in today and hope that you're really enjoying this awesome weather that we're having. Oh, Lucy, she wants in, let me tell you. Oh, goodness. All right, so let's switch our camera up here. Oh, how fun. So today Laurel went fly fishing with some friends. That's awesome. What a perfect day to go do that. Have, have you been before? That's what I want to know. I have never been fly fishing, but that's truly an art. Let's see. Sorry, we're turning to our other camera here, so it's gonna look a little a little weird. And probably ending just in time because my cat is gonna lose her mind here. So questions, comments, go ahead and throw them in in chat here for me and um, any kind of watercolor questions or what you'd like to see again. I want to thank Colin and Laurel for supporting this channel and supporting me on Patreon. It helps me show up here every day and it's really awesome that you do that. 
you want to learn more about me, you can go to IHaveDumption.com and check it out over there. And Laurel says, because Laurel responded here, she's new to fly fishing, but she had a blast. And that's awesome. That's what it's all about. So I'm glad you had a good time. You're, you're going to have to teach the rest of us now. <laughs> okay. So, um, yeah. Well, I appreciate you being here. I hope you have an awesome weekend and you do something really rad. And, um, yeah. And I'm going to go rescue my cat or rescue my door from my cat, maybe. So thank you, everyone. I really appreciate you being here. And I will see you next week here. And uh, keep painting. Keep enjoying what you're doing out there. Enjoy the warm weather. Looks like High End Woman has a question. So we'll hang on here just a second. What is... Sometimes there's a little bit of a delay here in uh, what kind is designer. Oh, okay. So she's asking what kind of gouache I think that I'm using here. And I, hang on just a second and I will get the tube and I can show you. It's a Windsor Newton gouache. Okay, so this is designer gouache that I'm using. It is permanent white. I'm sorry, I called this um, titanium white earlier, but it is permanent white. And you can see it's like a big tube. It'll last you forever. And yeah, you just order it from Dick Blick or if you're in Salt Lake City, and you're, you know, in the Pocatello area or something, but you're in Salt Lake, they have a dick book down there. And you can get it there. So check it out. Visit them online. And thank you. Thank you. I'm glad that you enjoyed that. I hope you learned something new. And as you practice your eyes, you guys are always welcome to share them on social media. You can find me uh, at at ihavegumption.com over on Instagram. And uh, you can share those with me or tag me and you can share your eyes because I love to see what you do too. So Okay. So I think we're doing pretty good here unless you have any other questions. I know it's hard to type and ask questions. <laughs> but again, if you do have questions in the future or you're watching the replay here, go ahead and throw them in the comments and I will answer them uh, within 24 hours generally. So I usually get back to you usually sooner than that. But if, you, if you're kind of watching this after the fact, you can always ask questions too. So, all right. I promised I was leaving, so now I'm really going to leave. So <laughs> thanks for tuning in. It's been awesome, guys, and I will see you later.